Hi, my name is Shari Kostravi, and I'm a senior aerospace engineering student here at the University of Michigan. Today, I will share with you my short research experience this summer under the supervision of Professor Fikowski. The topic of the research is time marching algorithms for the unstudy navier Stokes equations. These equations are used in many aerospace engineering CFD applications because they describe the motion of fluids. What we have done specifically over the course of this research period is developing higher order implicit methods. Now let's talk about the motivation behind developing such methods. The Navier-Stokes equations are often difficult to solve, and the higher order implicit methods address some of these difficulties. We'll talk about two specific issues today. The first one is the time integration aspect, and the second one is the, is the spatial accuracy aspect. The plot that I've prepared here, if we can take a look, is the plot of the 100 largest eigenvalues of the system for a flow with a bump perturbation case. As you can see, with increasing spatial order, which means as we refine the computational grid, what happens is that the eigenvalues tend to move away from the origin of the complex plane. This is, of course, indicative of the problem getting stiffer, which means if you were to use an explicit method rather than an implicit method to solve the problem, it would have to take really small time steps in order to ensure that the solution is stable. With implicit methods, however, we can take larger time steps and still obtain a stable solution, and this is because of their improved stability regions. This is uh, one of the reasons we like to use implicit methods when we are solving uh, stiff problems. Now, a legitimate question to ask is which implicit method is the most efficient one of the ones that we've developed, of course. The plot that is shown on this slide is a time accuracy study for the uh, implicit methods that have been developed. And as you can see, various, methods has, various implicit methods have been used to solve the same problem, and their time accuracy behaviors have been shown on this plot. The DRIK3 and 4 methods are showing much more competitive behavior in comparison to others because they take much less time in order to obtain highly accurate solutions. Now let's briefly talk about the spatial accuracy aspect of the problem. The plot that is shown here is a entropy convergence plot for the bump case that I mentioned earlier. As you can see, the entropy error is approaching zero as we keep refining the computational grid. And this convergence happens at the expected rate or even higher. We have seen some super convergence for uh, a couple of examples using these methods. This is, of course, another reason we like to use higher order methods to obtain highly accurate solutions. What I'd like to show you next is an example of what these methods are actually capable of doing. Here is a radial expansion wave that is propagating radially inward and is interacting with itself. This is a plot of the Mach number, of course, and uh, the color blue refers to Mach number 0, and the color red refers to Mach number 2.6. This extremely cool plot concludes our discussion today, and I thank you very much for your attention.